Would you eat this? It doesn't smell great either. What's sad is that this has made its way into major hospitals, though not in the way in which you're thinking. I want to talk today about a revolution that is sweeping the Western world. It's called integrative medicine. You may have heard of it. It's everywhere. Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, Harvard, the Mayo Clinic, MD Anderson. So what is it? The fundamental idea behind integrative medicine, or IM, is to combine two philosophies. Conventional medicine, and what is often referred to as complementary and alternative medicine. So drugs, surgery, and radiation on one end, energy healing, acupuncture, and homeopathy on the other. Fused together, integrated, the patient is said to be getting the best of both worlds. IAM makes a number of claims. Let's see if they hold up. Claim number one, patients ask for it. One of the common justifications for IAM is that patients are interested in and are consuming alternative medical treatments. And so we should teach medical doctors to practice medicine in collaboration with acupuncturists and Qigong instructors. Firstly, just because something is popular doesn't mean it's actually good. I'm looking at you, BuzzFeed. An argument from popularity is no proof that the pudding is nutritious. But is alternative medicine really popular? Are people really asking for it? In 2010, an Ipso Reid survey prepared for Health Canada revealed that 73% of Canadians surveyed, quote, regularly use complementary and alternative healthcare therapies. That's a lot, you'll agree. But let's go to the next question. When these 73% of Canadians were asked which alternative therapies they used, here's what they said. Over half said they took vitamin or mineral supplements. 18% said they took omega-3 or essential fatty acid supplements. 11% said tea. Tea! How is tea alternative when it is the most widely consumed beverage in the world next to water? Most Canadians who use alternative treatments are using supplements, not acupuncture. Do you know how many surveyed Canadians say they regularly use homeopathy? 7%. I agree, that's 7% too many, given that homeopathy flies in the face of chemistry and biology. But it's not like most Canucks are clamoring for impossibly dilute duck liver. Claim number two, the human body can heal itself. If you need to remember only one sign that you're about to be ripped off, it's this. The product you're about to buy helps your body heal itself. This is not medicine, it's wishful thinking. Yes, the body can usually heal itself of minor infections, but this idea that a plant or a hand-waving treatment helps your body heal itself is a way to get around having to show that your product works. It's a vague claim that does not need to be substantiated in order to market the product. Buyer beware. Claim number three, informed by evidence. I am apologists always say that the alternative treatments they admit into their practice are backed by solid evidence. What they mean is that some studies show they work. Some studies also show that vaccines cause autism and that gay marriage is wrong because magnets, magnets. There's a lot of crap in the scientific literature. One rock star in the field, John Unides, is famous for writing that most research findings are wrong. Sometimes it's fraud, but oftentimes it's bad study design, small sample sizes, and bad statistical analyses. Science is hard. Putting aside cherry-picked studies that seem to show that alternative medicine works, what does the most rigorous evidence tell us? Chiropractic. A 2010 systematic review by the Cochrane Group shows that for low back pain, there is no evidence to support or refute that combined chiropractic interventions provide a clinically meaningful advantage over other treatments for pain or disability. Maybe because it is based on a concept, the chiropractic subluxation, that has never ever been shown to even exist, much less cause disease. 
It was made up by Dee Dee Palmer, who claimed to have cured a deaf janitor. Acupuncture. The Cochrane Group once again to the rescue with a number of systematic reviews. Acupuncture for fibromyalgia? No difference in outcome between real and sham acupuncture and studies that are simply too small. For shoulder pain? Studies too small to conclude anything. For depression? The studies were too bad to conclude anything. There's even a study that shows that acupuncture seems to work when you prick a rubber arm that you've trained your brain to think as your own. You drop your arm below the table, put a fake arm in its place on the table, and stroke both at the same time. Your brain gets tricked. Turns out that the brain merely expects needle penetration and makes you feel accordingly. There are no acupuncture points, no chi. It's just a temporary placebo response. And placebo does not mean the treatment works. Homeopathy. The evidence against homeopathy is simply undeniable at this point. Not only do its principles fly in the face of science, but stacks of money have been burned trying to prove that it works and failing to do so. Governments are slowly waking up to the waste of money that is homeopathy. The UK's House of Commons Science and Tech Committee released a damning report in 2010, and so did the National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia in 2015. Reiki. Really? Hand-waving to heal someone's energy field? Apart from Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid, there is no evidence for Reiki, which is simply faith healing with a Japanese spin, aka magic. Uh, but it has been studied, oh yes, because let's waste citizens' tax money. Most of these studies are useless because they are poorly executed. But a study by Catlin and Taylor Ford divided 189 chemotherapy participants into three groups. Standard of care, Reiki with an actual Reiki master, and Reiki with some guy flailing his hands about who had no idea what he was doing. Guess what? When asked if they felt better, people who saw the real Reiki master and the clueless dude all said they did, to the same amount. No difference, because it's all in the head. There's no such thing as evidence-based alternative medicine. What is based on solid evidence becomes medicine. When you learn that a professor at McGill University researches evidence-based chiropractic, you know that the phrase evidence-based has lost all meaning. Integrative medicine makes other claims as well. Uh, for instance, they say that it focuses on the relationship between the patient and the practitioner, implying that medicine is cold and could use the warm touch of a Reiki master. That's like saying that because some airplanes crash, they need to be replaced by flying carpets. Ugh. Ugh. Another claim is that medicine focuses on the disease, and by integrating it with alternative medicine, we can start focusing on the whole person. That's like saying that a doctor doesn't see you, but sees an adenocarcinoma on two legs. Incidentally, the title of the next Eli Roth movie. Dr. Mark Chrislip is an infectious disease specialist in Oregon who writes for the blog Science Based Medicine, and he coined a great analogy. If you mix cow pie with apple pie, it does not make the cow pie taste better. It makes the apple pie worse. If you mix science-based medicine with wishful thinking, it does not improve science-based medicine. It worsens healthcare. Oh. 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 Would you eat this?